Welcome to Graber Works. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you do, please like, subscribe, and comment. Today's video is on how to make a simple laid dog. I need to make a quick and simple laid dog to make a laid tailstock alignment test standard. The laid dog is a mechanical device typically made of cast iron, steel, or aluminum that transmits rotary motion from a faceplate to a workpiece mounted between centers and a lathe. A lathe faceplate is a basic work holding accessory for the metal turning lathe. It is circular metal, usually cast iron plate, which fixes to the end of the lathe spindle. The tail of the dog is rotated by a slot in the driving face place, a stud mounted on the face place, or sometimes a side of a jaw chuck. The workpiece passes through an aperture in the dog into which the work is secured by one or more set screws or a clamp arrangement. The maximum cross-sectional dimension of the workpiece is limited by the dimensions of the dog aperture. Late dogs are provided in a straight tail or bent tail form and may be single tailed or double tailed. A lathe dog designed to hold square, rectangular, or odd shaped work having a movable portion secured typically by two cap screws is called a clamp dog. Bent tail dogs are able to gauge directly with a driving faceplate slot or a chuck jaw but can force work off center if clearance is not present between the dog tail and a closed end of the faceplate slot. Straight tail dogs do not present the issue of crowding work off center but require at least one driving stud to be mounted on the faceplate. If the rotating mass of the dog setup is not balanced, eccentric motion of the work may occur. Counterbalancing or reducing spindle speed may be required. Care must be taken by the operator when using lathe dogs as it is easy to get snagged on one. Use of the headless screws, preferably of multiple spline drive design, do not protrude above the outer surface of the dog and is recommended for use. A lathe dog may also be used with some indexing heads and other tools with similar face plates that turn them out of center. I used a piece of 1 and 3 16 inch diameter cold roll steel rod that will be used for the main lathe dog body. I also used a quarter 20 set screw for the main lathe body which will be used to tighten the workpiece in the lathe dog main body. I used a quarter 20 bolt and nut for the lathe dog leg. Here's a view of the project processing flowchart that guides the production of the lathe dog. The first process box is the project, and this is where you have already determined a need for the lathe dog. The first sub-process box is a decision to make or buy the lathe dog. I've boiled this decision down to the fundamental question of, do I make the lathe dog or do I buy one? This implies that I do have more time than money, I make it, or do I have more money than time, I buy the lathe dog. Import lathe dogs are cheap, but I've decided that I want to make as many lathe tools and accessories that I can to improve my skills and knowledge. The second process box is the requirements, which have sub-process boxes, material, machinery, tools, and time. I've already mentioned the materials required, the 1 and 3 16 diameter cold roll steel, the quarter 20 set screw bolt and nut. The machinery required is a lathe and a mill, but I'll mount the workpiece in the lathe and machine the flats instead of using my mill, which is not set up yet. Drill press and a drill press vise. Next are the tools, lathe bits, drill bits, center drill, tailstock drill chuck, quarter 20 tap, tap wrench, and a file or stone for deburring. Time is the next sub-process, and this involves the processing time and deadlines of when the tool is needed and approximating the expected time at each step of production. The time part is only a concern if you're selling your product in order to make a profit. Otherwise, enjoy the time spent making the project the best way you can. The third process box is the processes, which has sub-process boxes of design, material blanks, and quality control, material processing, and quality control again. I use FreeCAD to design and produce the prints for the lathe dog main body. I determined the blank dimensions of the parts in the material blank sub-processes from the FreeCAD design. The first quality control box, I measured the blanks to ensure they were the correct length and diameter. Once everything is past the quality control, I then started processing the parts. After I faced both ends of the dog body, I then put an indicator on the outside diameter stock 
just to see how out of center the stock was. This step is not necessary, but just a quick check to see where it was. As you can see, it's about a thousandths out of center. I then center drilled to create a pilot hole to help guide and start the drilling process. I center drilled about two thirds of the taper of the center drill into the ends of the stock using a pecking motion. Once I finished the center drill operation, I then started to drill through the lathe dog body using a pecking motion. I used several drills, starting with a small drill to create the hole in the lathe dog body. Then I used several larger drills to create a larger diameter hole in the lathe dog body. Once the lathe dog body had the hole drilled through it, I then proceeded to put a chamfer on the inner bore and used the file to knock down the burrs on the outside diameter of the lathe dog body. Once I finished one side, I then flipped the part around in the chuck and followed the same procedure of chamfering and deburring on the lathe dog body. Once the main body stock bore was completed, I then changed out the three jaw chuck for the four jaw chuck and chucked up the lathe dog body to machine the flats for the tap holes that were required. I did have an issue where the body was not perpendicular to the lathe chuck and I had to rechuck it to get the flats parallel with the lathe dog body stock hole. When I had the flats machined on the lathe dog body, I then used the spot drill to locate the holes for the tap screws. I could have used the center drill to start the holes, but I wanted to try another procedure to gain some learning experience. After I spot drilled the lathe dog body for the quarter 20 tapped holes, I then drilled the hole to size with a number 7 drill. When I spot drilled, I went deep enough to leave a chamfer on the hole. The chamfer keeps the tap from pulling material up when tapping and helps with guiding the tap. I then used a tap chuck and a quarter 20 tap and proceeded to tap the hole. After tapping, I deburred the inner bore of the lathe dog body and I checked the tap hole by running a quarter 20 bolt into it to ensure everything was good. At each stage of the material processing, I measured the parts to ensure that I made the lathe dog body to the correct amount.
the fourth process box is finishing, which comprises of sub boxes, paint, plating, polishing, and the final quality control. I don't think I'll ever plate any parts, but never say never. I did blue the lathe the dog using Birchwood Super Blue, rubber gloves, acetone, whey oil, and two shop towels. I did lightly sand the lathe dog body with emery fall off and then cleaned it using the acetone. I added a screw to help with handling the lathe dog body during the bluing process. I used the shop towel to apply the super blue and allowed the lathe dog body to dry for 15 minutes. After drying, I wiped the excess super blue from the body parts and applied another coat of super blue and allowed that to dry for 20 minutes or so. After it dried, I wiped the parts down again and allowed it to dry overnight. The part really showed some surface rust the next day. I applied some whey oil to the body and it really made the part look good. The final process box is the completion. This is where you get to sit back and admire the work you just did to produce this part. You can also go back through and see how close your estimates were to actual time and materials if you were doing a paint job. The final piece is measure your satisfaction for doing this in any other project. Thank you for watching Graber Works, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe for future videos, and comment. Thanks again. Thank mm -hmm. you.